What should be the proper expectations when we evaluate Nico Yamaliaba in his first year at Tennessee as the guy, right? Because he was on the on the roster last year. I was a redshirt guy, and I thought that was phenomenal for him to get to learn the ropes from someone who was as experienced as Joe Milton. When you come to Nico, man, like the pressure for him is nothing short of ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And that's not to say that he can't achieve all the pressure or can't, you know, achieve all the uh, expectations that are on him. But like, guys, the number one player in the class of 2023, anything it feels like for me, short of winning the Heisman Trophy and leading Tennessee to a college football playoff berth and heck, maybe winning the SEC on the way to doing that, I think a lot of Tennessee fans maybe would feel a little bit underwhelmed. And I'm not saying that that's the end-all, be-all for Nico and they're putting that kind of pressure on him. But the fact that's even a conversation around him, I think tells you a lot about the pressure that's on his shoulders right now and the, the expectations that are surrounding him right now. I think the better way to describe that is people are seeing Nico Iamaliava in Knoxville as the guy who can kind of be that equalizer for them to allow them to pass the Alabamas as they're kind of in this transition mode, to get them on that level of a Georgia, to make them a national title contender. Because the roster, they haven't recruited as well as those schools. But when you got the quarterback in the class of 2023, the best one out there, like there's obviously some reason for a lot of excitement, a lot of expectations. So while the pressure is ridiculous, the hype is very understandable. Like, it does not take an NFL scout to turn on Nico Iamaliava's game tape and say, yeah, dude's special. Dude's very special. Like, you watch him play. There's no physical limitations to his game. He can run it. You saw that in the bowl game. He can spray the ball around the yard. That's pretty obvious when you watch the ball pop out of his hand. And you also were able to win his recruitment over schools, like an Alabama, like a Georgia. Just rule of thumb for anybody out there, if Alabama wants your players, if Georgia wants your players, Kirby Smart and Nick Saban are spending their time recruiting those players, that's probably a good sign. Those guys are pretty good talent evaluators when it comes to uh, what the recruiting world has become. And also on top of that, the offense in 2022 was elite. Like if you're Tennessee, you've seen what that offense can be with the right guy pulling the trigger. Joe Milton, we've said a lot on this show, I think he was probably better than maybe some folks would like to admit from last year. Completed 65% of his passes, threw for over 2,800 yards, didn't throw a lot of picks, only five. Like, he was he was serviceable last year. And the offense scored 32 points a game. So say which one about Joe Milton, probably not what you would have hoped for as a Tennessee fan coming off of that 2022 ride with Henry Hooker. But Nico and what he brings to the table, man, he can physically bring more than what a Joe Milton brought in some respects. I think people think he's going to be a little bit more accurate. We'll talk more about that in a second. The bull game really sort of started to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the bull game really is what catapulted, I think, more of this hype too. Because before it was just like the, hey, have you seen his high school film? Hey, Nico is rated here. Hey, Nico's this, Nico's that. And then you saw him on the field and you're like, all right, we're winning the national title. Like that, that was kind of the narrative out of that bull game against Iowa. Because Iowa was a great defense. And Nico, quite frankly, tore him up on the ground. Did fine throwing the football, and he's going to be a guy, I think, for you in this upcoming season that has earned a lot of that excitement. So you look at the schedule. You play NC State in Charlotte. You play Kent State. You're at Oklahoma to open the year. I want to make sure we say this. Let's allow for some progress for Nico with the way that we evaluate him going forward. Like Let's, let's understand that those first couple of games, what he is in those games, what he is at Oklahoma, he might be a different quarterback then than he is at Georgia November 16th. Like, he's a guy that's still figuring out how to actually be a college quarterback. Yes, he got a whole year doing it, but you can't account for how valuable game experience is. And thankfully for Nico, he's about to get a whole lot of that. But I'm just making sure we say this. You saw the bowl game. He was awesome. Let's make sure that we understand he's still a developing product. He's still getting to be what his best is going to be. And so my hope here is that we allow for some context, which I think is massive for any conversation in college football, but let's allow for some context as we set expectations for Nico. Like, if Nico goes out there and throws the interception in game one and doesn't have the kind of success that you would hope he would have in game one, let's be slow to press the panic button because so much of this Tennessee offense, I believe, as football is just period, so much of it is dependent on your teammates answering the call to action as well. Like, if Nico struggles, let's, let's understand that there's a lot, too, on what is his running game doing. 
because the running game is what sets up the pass game for, for Tennessee. What are his receivers doing? Do you have guys that are winning consistently on the outside? Joe Milton, I think, kind of got a raw deal in this sense. Now, Joe Milton, was he, was he the solution in all of those situations where things weren't perfect? No, he wasn't like the eraser of sorts, but still, Squirrel White was really the only receiver that I saw last year for Tennessee be a true threat against defenses. Brew McCoy got hurt, and that's horrible. You hate that for Tennessee, but I'm just saying if he stays healthy, maybe Joe Milton has better numbers. Maybe Tennessee looks a little bit sharper offensively at different points during the year. So again, if Nico doesn't have the success you want him to have, understand that he's a, you know, a first-year starting quarterback and that this offense is built on other pieces also winning their matchups and also doing their job. So Joe Milton last year, we talked about it, 20 touchdowns, 5 picks, 2,800 yards, and 65% of his passes completed. Also ran for 7 touchdowns. If Nico Iamaliava has that stat line, I'd be very excited. I'd be very excited because that means that's probably the base for him, the jumping off point for what his career is going to be in Knoxville. But I would also say I think he's going to have a better stat line than that. I think he'll be somewhere north of 65% in terms of his completion percentage. And that's the key thing I want to say here. You compare Joe Milton's stats last year to what Hannon Hooker's stats were when he had that magical ride in 2022 and he didn't get to play the full season, which you hate for him. But like the key differentiator between Joe Milton and Hendon Hooker, for me, was completion percentage. Hendon Hooker was like 69% on his passes. That is why they were so successful. That is why the offense hummed the way that it did. And so, as freakishly gifted as Nico Iamaliava is physically, as much as he brings running the football, as much as he can do throwing the ball downfield for you, the key thing for him is consistency. Can you consistently hit those passes that are somewhere between 15 yards and 10 yards and be on the money and be on time? Because if you can, that's when this thing hums. At that point, that's when defenses are going to have to, you know, honor that sort of pass game. And then the run game gets rolling. And those safeties creep down. And the deep plays get going. Then Nico starts throwing deep shots. And then you also have the RPO game open up. So all of this Tennessee offense is dependent upon each other. There's layers to it. And so if he can be consistent and have stability with what's asked of him, that's going to be a game changer for Tennessee. And at that point, we talked about 32 points a game for Tennessee last year. I wouldn't be shocked in the slightest if Nico is consistent throwing the football, Tennessee averaging somewhere in the range of 36, 37 points a game. Now, that's lofty. That is sort of some things breaking your way. There's no way around it. But if that happens, how many games is Tennessee winning? Nine, ten? So I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to set expectations for Nico Iamaliava, but at the same time, the talent is obvious, the physical giftings are obvious, and what he's going to be long-term in Knoxville is and should be extremely exciting. So the big thing for him, consistency, make your layups, be able to hit those intermediate passes, and go from there. Hey, y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.